So, Red Hat, obviously we're not going to talk about products or anything like that. Effectively we're going to talk about our vision, our view of exactly what cloud is. Um, I was uh, with a, a large um, vendor of technology a few years ago and uh, they always started off presentations by saying, do you know how many versions or definitions of cloud there are? Four years ago there were 475 different definitions of the word cloud. What does it mean? Well, in the end, cloud, effectively, is whatever you want it to mean. It is the ability to actually use, basically compute, it's the ability to use storage, it's whatever you're trying to use. Um, but it's not necessarily taking the, the old stuff back. Okay, let's try that again. So that's back. And then everybody else can see what I'm talking about. Is that working? So, yeah, excellent. All right. uh, the background is um, we have an office in Farnborough, so every uh, two years we get to see the air show. So I just thought, as the red arrows were flying over, it's a really good backdrop for my other screen. At least reminds me I've got the right slide deck up. Um, so anyway, uh, well, so I'm going to talk about open standards, open source, and finishing on the idea of where this is all leading. So there's a few too many slides here, so I'll just go, skip over it. But the important thing is, we always talk about, whether I'm talking to commercial customers, I'm talking to government in whether, whatever section, it's all around the enabling around open source. Open source allows us to do lots of things we could never do. There are millions of developers, there are thousands of people out there actually working on open source projects, and we want to make sure this all effectively allows people to make the most of it, to show innovation, to extend out. But we have to do that by being open in both our approach in terms of standards, but importantly in terms of open source. Because open source allows us to do far more in terms of sharing and community and making sure that we can extend out. Cloud itself has been extended, expanded, pushed, whatever you want to call it, by lots of things. We could talk about Internet of Things, we could talk about automation and big data, and they're all reasons why people have expanded out into using cloud. Um, they all need one thing and that's standards. So we need to be able to say that if I take a service up into whatever cloud provider, that I can take that service and I can run it somewhere else. Because I want to avoid locking. And that, to my mind, is one thing that we really do need to make sure we strive to avoid. Because we don't want someone controlling the market, we want the market to basically take on whatever we basically deem at that time. It needs to move with whatever the needs are, be it technology, be it business, be it the actual end citizen. We need to look at that and not be locked into one vendor's view of the world. So cloud has to be self-service, broadly accessible. We need to be able to make sure we can go up and down. So we can have less resource, more resource, depending on how to see it. And we need to be able to manage measure it. But when we make it open, we need to make sure that we control the architecture to make sure that we're not basically saying, I have this set of programs, these applications, that's all I'll ever have. I want to make sure that I can change my mind as I move forward. I need that freedom of movement. I need to be able to take these applications, and today I have it with one vendor, tomorrow I have it with somebody else. And I don't want anyone saying I can't do it. Commercially, I might want to make a decision based on the cost today and the cost tomorrow, or resilience, or whatever terms I'm actually using to make my decisions, but I need to make sure I have that freedom. So I need to make sure I don't get locked in with licenses or applications. I need to make sure that I hold, I understand, I take account of everything from licensing as I move on. I need access to management. I need to be able to control my cloud components, whatever I see, wherever they see. But I make sure that I always know what I've got running and where. I'm not holding on to somebody else's view of what I should be able to see. I should be able to see everything that I own, that I control, and I want to control. 
But again, I'm saying there's no locking. I want to make sure that I never get stuck again. I don't want the legacy issues we had with Unix or computing back in the mainframe days. I want to make sure my future is completely open. Um, as I said, a couple of slides I'm just going to go through here. Effectively, there are almost three views for what cloud is. I'm not going to go into great detail. But hybrid cloud is one area that we're starting to see more of, where I've actually got components running inside a local data center, but using facilities out in an actual public cloud as part of a virtual private cloud. So that's where I'm running services in Amazon or Azure or wherever. I have a view, which means I can basically burst in, take systems in, take systems out as they see fit. But we also now have a new way to look at it as well. Um, we have lots of commercial customers and lots of government departments, but now lots of time to look at things like OpenStack. Now OpenStack is one I'm sure we'll come back to when we start the discussion, but effectively it is a data center in a box. But it's not the answer to every problem there is. It's a solution that cures some of those issues we move on. Um, we can talk about this in detail, but effectively OpenStack is lots of different projects bundled together with very rapid cadence in how it comes. Every large vendor of technology looks at OpenStack as an opportunity, and most basically have solutions or services that sit inside it. So it's an opportunity for government, it's an opportunity to basically extend out into the citizen, but it's also a way that we can make sure we don't actually lock into the services and move on. Cloud architecture, there's lots of things to cloud architecture. Uh, if you look at some of the reference platforms, there's 30 or 40 different components you could plug together to make up a service that means you can control it. In the end, you're providing services, you're providing solutions, we can leave it at that. The rest of it is actually how you do it and how you pay for those services and solutions. There are driving parts behind it. And if we look at things like the open virtualization format, now what does that mean? Well, as you see from the slide, I could, we could go into detail, but effectively it means that if you have a virtualization technology, you have an ability to basically move that virtualization, that VM, that operating system, from one place to another. And OVF gives us that. The new kid on the street is the Open Container Initiative. This starts to look at the same ways we've done for full virtualization, but with containers. Now, if you've not come across containers, containers aren't new, but containers gives us the ability to split up applications into smaller components and run them at scale as we see fit. We're seeing from a developer's point of view, massive take up of basically containers, and obviously around this, this standards which are coming from places like Docker. This is becoming more and more of a drive behind not just standard computing, but also cloud computing as well. The slide here is just basically go over it, so when you look at it back in your own leisure, in terms of actually how containers work, so I can skip over that. Containers basically give us application delivery. It's this melding of operations and development together, which gives us the idea of DevOps, but it gives us control all the way through. The people who need control, the people who want to consume, and basically then brings together a service that makes sense of the scales that you want. Which comes through to sort of my last point, which is the open future. We now think of basically compute and data and firewalls and all these components that make up this constituent part of what a cloud service is. We're talking to an end user, a mobile device, whatever it is. The important thing is, is the application. The application has been and always is key. The application should be able to say, I need this amount of data, I need access to these components. It should be able to say, I need these parts of the network. I need these virtual public networks, I need this VPN, or whatever it might be. It says what it needs, and it then talks to other pieces of software to get those components. It then talks to the computer. It says how many pieces of compute it needs, whatever size, how long it needs it for, but it provides the services. As we then move further forward, it then says to the firewall, I need these ports open, I need to be able to access this to the outside world. My application becomes aware, it becomes understood, it becomes the intelligence. So the application basically makes sense of what cloud will be. It will make a decision about where it runs, how it runs, what it's going to do, the cost, the resources and the location to make those services and solutions. The application will make those decisions. And that's only hours, days, weeks away, however you look at it. But it's a method of basically looking at 
the application is going to drive the standards, open source helps drive that whole pro problem, problem the proposition into the idea of an open future. It takes all those components together, open standards, open source, giving you the ability to take these things open and basically giving a natural future to applications and never locking yourselves in again. And that's as quick as I can do it. <laughs>